Hey there, uh, this is going to be part two of the Bachelier uh, model uh, little mini-series here. Um, it's going to be a little bit disjointed because I want to do two kind of separate things. Um, I know someone's going to ask about puts because we did calls last time and they asked about puts when Black-Scholes model, even when the equation is just given in the Wikipedia page. But um, yeah, so I just kind of want to short circuit that, short circuit that to begin with. And then I just want to play around with uh, SymPy, which is a tool for doing kind of like symbolic algebra manipulation, um, some calculus stuff, integrals, differentiation, that type of thing. Yeah, and apply it to uh, basically just this model. We'll calculate a call price using SymPy, and then we will um, calculate symbolically the derivative with respect to the price. So in other words, the delta of the option and calculate a delta both um, an algebraic expression for delta and then numerically evaluate it and uh, we'll maybe we'll compare it to, um, to something we do uh, numerically with our original model. So having said all that, let's just uh, dive into it. Okay, so this is our notebook from last time and recall um, we did a comparison between Bachelier and Black-Scholes and here are our Black-Scholes equations and we had also pulled in our Black-Scholes functions uh, here's the call price, here's the put price, and so on. And then we just did the Bachelier uh, price of a call. But I know somebody's going to ask, so let's also just figure out a price of a put. So what I'm going to do is just use uh, put call parity to do that. And I'm not going to bother cleaning up the algebra. What I'm going to do is just come down here. Um, let me just make sure this I run this to pull in everything. Where is run all? Okay, so everything is good, and let's just zoom in a little bit here. So as I said, we're going to use put call parity to do that, and that's usually expressed like uh, this here. If you know the price of a call, uh, let's call that C, uh, the price, uh, if you subtract the price of the corresponding put at the same strike, you should get back the stock price minus uh, the strike price multiplied times e to the minus RT. In other words, we can rearrange that and get the price of a put here. So we just did a little bit of algebra, and this is what we get. And if you look at the Wikipedia page on Black-Scholes, this is how they get the price of the put option. Um, they derive it from the price of a call. So let us just go all the way up here. Where do we do our comparison? Um, let's just take all of this. We're going to paste it in down here. Um, our stock price is going from 90 to 110. Let's address, adjust our stock or strike price. So instead of 105, I don't know, 90. Let's make it 90. And um, we probably don't need to do 100 points here. Let's just do 50. Does that run? Yes. And since we already have our put function uh, for Black Scholes defined above, let's just um, make use of that. So put, let's call it put underscore BS is equal to put price sigma S K R T. And let's plot that out down here. So PLT dot plot uh, S comma put underscore black shoals. And we'll do a line, a black line. Okay. So how do we get our Bachelier? Well, I just kind of described the process up here. We're going to figure out the price of a call, uh, which is essentially what we did in the last video. So I'm going to call that price C, and that's equal to our Bachelier function. I probably should have called it, um, I probably should have called it call or something, but oh well. Um, sigma, and we need to adjust by the stock price. See the last video for that? And then we go S, K, R, and T. Um, does this run? Excellent. So our put price is just given by this formula here. So C minus S and uh, plus E to the minus R, T, K plus M, P dot E, X, P minus R times T times K. So far, so good. Let's plot that on the same plot. PLT dot, <clears throat> PLT dot plot S comma P, and we'll make this uh, blue dots just as we did above. 
and we get basically the same curve back. Uh, something doesn't look quite right here. I expected a little bit better agreement. Let me um, just shut off the recording and see if I can see if there are any typos or bugs here. No, that's that's about right uh, compared it to the call price uh, plotted above, and that looks okay. I think what it is is I had this for the call price, not set to 50, but 100. So it just looked like there are more points, um, denser plot of points. Okay. Uh, let's go on and play around a little bit with SimPy. Okay, so I'm going to do this in a different notebook. And these are the imports we're going to use. Uh, just from SimPy, we're going to pull in these functions that we're going to use direct, directly. Obviously, the symbol uh, command, diff for differentiation, the error function for defining um, the cumulative distribution, square root. Uh, we're going to have to do some sort of printing configuration just to make things look pretty. And then, of course, natural log, the exponential function. Um, why do I have diff in here twice? And pi, uh, again, for defining the uh, distribution functions, uh, the normal and cumulative. And then for debugging purposes, it is also useful to pull in the plot, um, plot command. And then we're going to, of course, uh, configure our printing, um, our ability to, to print to the screen. So I'm going to run that. And what I'm going to do is just copy the uh, function that we need, the, the Bachelier call uh, price function from the previous notebook. So let's go over here and dig that up. Where is it? Uh, here it is. So what we're just going to do is just copy all of this. Not like that. Come on. Copy. Cool. And we'll just drop it in here uh, just for our reference. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is to define all of our variables that go into this um, into this equation. Uh, so that's our stock price, strike price, this, all the stuff as usual. And I'm going to specify uh, that these are all real uh, real valued functions. Run that. That looks good. And now I want to define, because as far as I know, uh, SimPy does not have the distribution functions built in as symbolic, uh, symbolically manipulable functions, but they do have numerical, um, numerical equivalents, but that doesn't really do us much good. So what I'm going to do is just go to the Wikipedia page for the normal distribution. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And... What I'm going to do is copy the functions we need, which, which are the, uh, where, 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 here we are, the density function, which is our normal Gaussian type thing, and the cumulative function uh, defined here. And that's why I pulled in this error function, because we need to, uh, we need to use that. And then, of course, the functions used here, these capital and lowercase phi's, are uh, defined as the normal, the normal distribution, standard normal distribution of mean zero and standard deviation of one. So don't confuse this sigma exactly with with the volatility uh, that goes into those equations. So when we enter these in, we're going to set mu the mean equal to zero and sigma equal to one. So like the argument of this error function would only be x over the square root of two. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, do that now. And I might uh, just uh, not record it because it's kind of boring just to watch me type. So first I'm going to define a variable d. And if you read through uh, some of the literature on this model, you will uh, recognize that the arguments of these functions, which I've written out ex here explicitly, are often set equal to d, just to simplify the, the algebra a little. So I'm going to do that here and now enter in the two distribution functions. So here I've done that, uh, CDF for the cumulative, PDF for the density function, and what do you think the odds are I have no typos whatsoever in here? Oh wow, it actually took it. Cool. Okay, so I had finished the entire video and I uh, was going back through the, uh, the, the recording and the audio had cut out um, right after I had defined these density functions. So what I'm going to do is just instead of re-recording re re everything, um, just kind of comment through on this stuff here and and uh, so on. Um, but before talking about all of this stuff, one of the things that is kind of useful about this is you could just plot out these equations here. So when I'm typing this in originally, I kept getting um, 
really weird numbers, and it's because one of these parentheses uh, was misplaced in the density function. So what I'm going to do is just grab a variable here and just kind of um, basically zero out or redefine this D uh, thing just to be a, a symbol rather than this um, expression that goes into the argument of these functions. And I can just plot out this density function. So plot CDF and it takes a uh, tuple, uh, the variable, and then your range, so minus 5 to 5. I plot it, and I get um, the curve here. So I can see that it is uh, indeed correct. It should go to 0 as we go to minus infinity, and plus 1 as we go to plus infinity. And when I was plotting it out, trying to debug this, I was getting something very different, where this curve was kind of squished down. So that told me there was an error in that function. Uh, error in the way this was written. Um, just a useful thing. I've used it a couple of times. Um, uh, most recently with, come on, vanish, a uh, transformation. I was doing a, um, di solving a differential equation. I had a weird transformation of coordinates and things just were not working out. So I was able to use uh, SymPy and just kind of break down the expression because it was quite long and involved. Um, into a bunch of simpler things and plot them out and then track down the error that way. So here is the expression for the call. It's just basically this typed out. It's essentially the same as, uh, where did I define it? Here. Oh, where is it? basically adjust this copied uh, over. So where were we? So we could take this printed out and if you stare at it long enough you'll realize that it's just the same as here. It's just done a little bit of algebra and rearranging in a way that it thinks is best. Uh, oftentimes I disagree with the way it thinks it's best but you know it is what it is. Uh, but another nice thing about this is you can substitute in uh, values and get a numerical answer out uh, if you want to evaluate a specific you know specific um, stock price strike price whatever um, let's go back to here and for example we'll keep keep, uh, keep these um, you know volatilities and whatnot and come down here and let's just look at the 100 uh, strike price so that call based on this plot should be about a buck fifty uh, we use the substitute command subs uh, that takes a list of tuples where you define s is equal to 100, k is equal to 105, and so on. And then you could either um, store this in a separate var var variable and call the eval f, your floating point evaluation function on it, or just kind of tack it on to the end here, which is what I did. And we get a dollar fifty-one, which is what we'd expect. But where I think this is really useful is calculating things like the the corresponding Greeks. Um, delta is the derivative of this with respect to s. I don't know about you, but I have zero desire of actually working out what that that is. Um, so we can come down here and just use the diff command for differentiate our call price c, which you know we defined up here, with respect to the variable s. Now we print it out. It's this monstrosity here. And we can come in and calculate just as above uh, for the 100 call um, using the same technique as we use for the, for, for the um, call price, the delta. And we get a delta of about 28 and change, 28.4-ish. In fact, let's go back to this uh, notebook here. And let's just calculate what the delta is in the black shoal case. It should be 28, 29, 30 should be about the about the same because these curves are basically parallel to each other. So um, the delta of an option is equal to the delta of an option in the Black Scholes model is just equal to this d1 term here, um, run through the normal cumulative distribution function. So let's just come down. Let's just copy this actually. We'll come down here and just paste it in. I'm going to delete this and not put it in the notebook uh, permanently. Set a stock price of, equal, of 100. Uh, run it. Make sure there are no errors. Good. So now let's just print out our delta. Our delta should be equal to norm.cdf of d1. And we get a delta of a little more than 30, which is, you know, well within the, uh, the ballpark. So let me get rid of this because we don't really want it in the notebook. 
So yeah, that's SimPy as, as, as applied to these uh, models. I don't know if it's super, super useful, but it does have its utilities. So that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And until next time, I will see you.